So let me first um, start by introducing myself. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, I am Lori Overton. I am the founder of Overton Travel, and I am blessed, blessed, blessed beyond measure to be able to take you around the globe. So thank you for entrusting your time and your resources to Overton Travel for the last 12 years, no, last 13 years now. And, um, and I hope this to continue going on um, for many, many more years to come. Okay, so great. So I'm sharing my screen today and my right now. So what I wanna do on this trip is to talk about our 2024 trip that we have remaining and the 2025 trip that we've started planning so far. Um, so to let you know that yes, you still can go somewhere this year. There is space available on trips. So people keep asking me, Lori, the space available on this trip, that trip, the answer is yes. From the trip from Ghana on, there is space available. So for you last minute people, I got you. I got you. You can still sign up for this year's trip. And then for those who like to plan in advance, we've already started from 2025. I think we have maybe about 11 trips ready for 2025. Some of them we're going to drop tonight. Some of them you've seen already. So get sit down, relax, and let's talk about travel. One of my favorite things to do. Okay. So let me see if I can get this going. All right, here we go. So for those of you who don't, who don't know me or don't know us or with the travel, I'm just going to take a minute to tell you about us. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I am Lori Overton. I am the founder of Overton Travel. I am pretty much the face of, of, of the company. However, there is a team behind me. So I could not do this alone. So I am a Black woman. Of course, you can see that um, Overton Travel is a certified minority on um, minority of women owned business enterprise and what we specialize on. This is what kind of get my blood circulating, gets me excited. We specialize on those big bucket list trips, those trips that you're kind of scared to take by yourself. So I see my value in taking that fear out of the planning, out of the going, taking that fear out of being alone. Um, I kind of ease all those, all, all those doubts and worries you have because I do all the planning for you. We, me and my team, I cannot say I anymore, my team and I, we plan all the group trips for you from beginning to end. You basically just have to pay and show up. And for those of you who have traveled with me before, you know this how we do things. And for those of you who haven't, I'm telling you, we have payment plans. We have everything. The itinerary for every trip is always on the website. Um, the payment plan is there. All the hotels that we're going to stay in is there. Every now and then a hotel may change because of, you know, different reasons. But for the most part, 90% of the time, where we're going to stay that's on the website is where we're going to stay. So everything is planned. We have our own buses. We have our own tour guides. It is a private tour. And, and these trips, I can't even call them trips. These travel experiences, they are culturally immersive trips. I do not put together travel packages. No, 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 no package. It's a travel experience. I can guarantee you that once you go on an Overton travel trip, you will not travel the same way again. You will not see the world the same way again. These are cultural experiences and we hope to transform you. And so with that being said, we've been doing this for 11 years, 12 years, 13 years, I think now, um, taking people all around the world. We have grown. My team has grown. Is You see me, but I have a team of ambassadors who go on trips. I have what, 20, 25 trips this year, so I cannot be in all of them. So God has blessed me with some amazing travel ambassador who treat Overton Travel as their own company. Um, I also have a, an office team of about five people um, that work in the back office to make sure you get all your questions answered, you get the information you need. Um, they are all over the all over the world. You have some people in the Philippines, some in Florida, and then I'm expanding my team to be um, in Africa as well because we do so many trips to Africa. My partners in Africa say, "Lori, why don't you we just 
partner together and you can have some people based out here. So good thing, good thing um, are coming for us to God be the glory. Um, we are growing and we're, and we are um, staying strong. So with that being said, I'm proud to um, just remind you that last year we made the BET list. Um, BET put out a list of five black travel groups you need to use for your next vacation. And I'm proud to say that Overton Travel was listed as one of those five tra top travel groups. So um, that is an honor that I am glad um, that, that we have achieved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying the good things about us. Continue to travel with us. And uh, we will continue to bring you the world um, at the standards that Overton Travel um, knows how to do. Okay. So um Let's take a minute. I like to start uh, each each webinar with a little video because, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words. So I have a video that's coming up that's going to show you some of the places that we've been over the last you know, year, year or two. So some of you may see yourself um, in, in the videos. And so um, here we go. Okay. As you can see, there were pictures from Greece, from Italy, from, from, um, let me move forward, from all over, from um, Ghana, from Peru. So we go all over the world. Um, one of the things that I am proud of is that I do not pigeonhole where you know, where black people go to 99% of, of, of my clients are uh, black and mainly women as well. And so I don't want to say, oh, we only go here or we don't go here. We don't go there. No, we do the world. We're doing Iceland. We're doing Vietnam. We're doing Nepal. We're doing India, as well as the Caribbean, as well as Europe, as well as Asia. So um, you cannot box us. So let's get started. So let me let me tell you about what we have left for this year. Um, if you want to sign up, you can. The first trip that's available is Ghana. And you really want to go to Ghana, let me know like tomorrow or next week because um, this trip is kind of sort of technically closed, but I know there's space available so I can squeeze you in. So if you have it on your heart to go to Ghana, reach out. Um, um, reach out to me tomorrow. So let, let's start with Ghana. And this is our second tour of Ghana. We had one group go to Ghana in February already. Um, during Black History Month, I thought that was a nice thing to do um, to go to the motherland during Black History Month. But we also go during the summertime um, as well. And so this summer, we're going July 10th through the 20th. And let me just give you some highlights uh, of this, this Ghana trip. Uh, Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Ghana is amazing. I go to Africa several times a year. I go to North Africa, South Africa, East, West, you name it. But if you really want to feel like you're in the motherland from what we what we what we envision a motherland to be, go to Ghana. Ghana makes you feel like you have come home, even if you're not from Ghana. Like I haven't done my gene genealogies. I don't know, you know, where my ancestors are from, what part of Africa. But when you go to Ghana, you feel like you're Ghanaian. <laughs> and so they, they welcome you like no one else. Um, so this is one of the reasons I, I like going to Ghana. I say Ghana is a very, it's a cultural exploration. Um, it's rich in history. The people are, a warm and welcoming. They give you a grand Aquaba welcome um, in Ghana. So let me just give you some quick highlight. Of course, you go to Ghana. Uh, one of the one of the main reasons that people go is to learn about the transatlantic um, slave trade, and you're gonna definitely hit that. So we're gonna 
learn about this when we go down to the Cape Coast. So you'll go to Elmina Castle, you'll go to Cape Coast Castle, and you'll learn about how our ancestors were treated during the during the time they were captured and during the time they were held in the dungeon and during the time that they were given, quote unquote, their last bath before they were then shipped across the Atlantic Ocean um, to the Americas. Uh, this is a heavy trip. You know, I'm going back to Ghana again in July. This would be the fourth group that I've personally done um, to Ghana. And uh, I love it. But then it's always it's always just heavy on some days. Uh, so so just be prepared for that. But then it's also very enlightening. I get very um, encouraged because I see what my ancestors have endured, but I'm still here. I'm here. So they endured some imaginable, imaginable situation, but yet they survive. So that right there gives me strength when I'm going through something. I said, look, they got through that. I can get through this. So we do um, learn about the, um, the, the transatlantic slave trade, uh, but we start in Accra. And Accra is the capital of Ghana. It's a bustling city, beautiful hotel, beautiful nightlife. So you're going to start out, you know, um, in, in a great city. And you're going to do a city tour of Accra. You're going to go to the Kwame Nkrumah Center. You're going to go to the, um, the um, W.B. Du Bois Center. So you'll learn about the Ghana independence, um, like modern day, day Ghana. Then, like I said, you'll go to Cape Coast. And you'll learn about this, the slave trade. And then you'll also go to Kamasi. And then in Kamasi, you learn about the Ashantis. And the Ashanti, they were bad. They were bad warriors. So you get proud again. Um, so you go through ups and downs in Ghana with, with, with your emotion. Um, of course, we shop, shop, shop. People lose their mind in Ghana. I tell them, bring an extra suitcase because you will need it on the way back. Um, shea butter, black soap, fabrics, dresses, I mean, jewelry, you name it, people buy it in Ghana. So it is a shopper's paradise. Uh, we go to the um, the Shanti craft villages as well, the wood carvers village, the Indinka um, symbol um, village. We go to the Kente Reaving village. So it's a great trip. Um, the price of this trip is sixty nine ninety nine per person, and that's based upon double occupancy. So if you want to go to Ghana, let me know like now. Okay, so the next trip that's available is South Africa, and this is South Africa in August. Y'all know I love me from South Africa. I can't even hide it. You know, I call my trip like my children and South Africa is my firstborn. <laughs> so the first group trip I ever did was to South Africa. And every single time I think about that, I thank God for these people who went with me on a trip and I know what I was doing. I, I guess I knew what I was doing. But anyhow, it was my very first trip. And it was so amazing. It was so good that, you know, 13 years later, we're still doing, still doing it. And we're still doing South Africa. And this trip has not changed much at all. So we're going August 14th to the 24th. We do this every year, about third week in August, second, third week in August. Um, and it's always, always, always a crowd pleaser. So I call this the South Africa Discovery Tour um, because it hits uh, a lot of the highlights of South Africa. We start with four nights in Cape Town. Cape Town is probably one of my favorite cities in the world, if not the favorite, one of the favorite city, my favorite cities in the world. Beautiful city. Um, the scenery is unmatched by anything I've ever seen. Um, the people are friendly um, in, in South Africa. The food is amazing. I think the best lamb I've had is in South Africa. Some of the best wine is in South Africa. The scenery along the the um, the southernmost tip of Africa along the Cape Peninsula is jaw-dropping, jaw breathtakingly beautiful. So um, it hits beauty. So Cape Town is gorgeous. Then after spending four nights in Cape Town, you go to Palantinaburg and you spend two nights on the um, game reserve, two nights in the Safari Lodge. And that is an amazing experience in and of itself. Um, you get to go on four game drives while you're there. And um, so that's great. You have free time to kind of relax um, while you're on the Safari game drive, I mean, um, reserve. Um, they have a beautiful spa. Great massages. I always get there when I, when I, whenever I go to Plantsburg. I always 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 get a massage and relax at the spa. Um, then after two nights in Plantsburg, you spend two more nights in Johannesburg, 
and then Johannesburg is one of the three capitals of, of South Africa. Uh, and Johannesburg is like New York City, you know, big building, bright, like fast. You know, when I went there in uh, March, my uh, my tour guide, when I landed in Johannesburg, he said, welcome to Joe Hustleburg. They got the hustle mentality going on in Johannesburg. Great trip. Um, I always, always recommend South Africa. I've probably taken more people to South Africa than on any other trip um, I have. So this is tried. This is true. Um, so always a great trip. So after South Africa in August, we go to Greece. Greece is September 12th to the 21st. And I love Greece. I have personally spent two of my birthdays in, in Greece. That's how much I love it. Uh, it's an easy trip, easy, easy destination to visit um, in Europe. Um, you know, the most people speak English. The weather is nice. It's beautiful. Um, like I said, I love Cape Town because it's a beautiful city. I would say maybe second or tied with Cape Town is Santorini. Santorini is is also just unreal. Um, and no picture that you that I can show you of Santorini would do it justice until you're absolutely there. So let me tell you a little bit about our trip to Greece. We start out in Athens. We spend two nights in Athens. Um, and then while you're in Athens, you're going to, of course, visit. I can't, of course, but we will, of course, visit the Acropolis. And you'll go up to the top. And you'll see the Parthenon, you'll see the new Acropolis Museum, Syntagma Square, and we stay dead smack right in the middle of, um, of downtown Athens. So you walk out your door and everything is, is right there. After two nights, and, oh, we also do an optional tour of um, Dinner in the Sky. So that's always fun, a fun experience. After two nights in Athens, we take the ferry over to Mykonos. We spend three nights in Mykonos. Mykonos is like the party island, the fun island. Mykonos has beaches as well. So I like Mykonos for that kind of laid back, but party vibe as well. Um, so Mykonos is a really fun city to go to. And then after three nights in Mykonos, we take the ferry over to, um, Oh, um, to um, Santorini, Santorini, and we spend three more nights in Santorini. So this is a great tour that is a combination of activities and downtime um, because we have at least one day of planned activities on each island or each destination. And then you have a day and a half of free time. So unlike all most of my other trips, which you're just running, 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 running. Um, this one, you run, stop, run, stop. And so you will, excuse me, you will get a little bit of a vacation on, on this trip. This one is $59.99 per, $59 per person, double occupancy. And then let me just explain to you about the prices that are presented here. All of the, the prices here include airfare, round trip airfare from New York, um, except the South African one is from Newark, but everything else is from, um, from JFK. Uh, Round trip airfare in economy. So it includes your airfare, your hotels, all your transfers, all your tours. And I would say a good 80% of your meals are, are included in, in that price. Um, you'll pay more if you want single occupancy and you will pay less if you want to book your own flights. So if you want to upgrade your flight, then each trip always has a land only price so that you can pay um, just the land only price to me and then buy your flight separately. Yeah. All right. Next, Morocco. Morocco is always a great adventure. My group just got back from Morocco on Saturday. So this is Morocco Tour 2. Um, that tour is going to take place from September 16th through the 28th. And this Morocco trip is bad, y'all. Let me tell you, this is an adventure. It is an adventure through the desert. It's a long trip. It's almost two weeks long. Um, I'm just going to tell you this now. I can't, I, I won't even front. You will come back home tired from Morocco. You will be tired, but you're going to be good and tired. It's going to be a good tired because when you come back, you're going to feel like you have seen Morocco. We will take you from Casablanca, which is the bustling city, um, which is probably the most well-known city um, in, in Morocco. You go to Rabat, Rabat, which is the capital. You'll see, you know, the beautiful capital there. You will go to um, um, Tangier 
and you'll see the waters along the coast. You'll go up to the mountains and Ephraim. You will see the Atlas Mountains. Um, you'll go down into the Sahara Desert. You'll get a chance to spend the night in a luxury tent. Yes, your tent will have its own bathroom. It has AC in it. Um, you spend the time in the desert. And then you'll head over to uh, Marrakesh. And you'll be back in a beautiful pink city of Marrakesh. So it is really a journey across um, Morocco. You'll be in a bus. You'll be in um, SUV. You'll be in ATVs. And if you so choose, you can even travel by camel. We got it all from you for you. You would drink your weight in mint tea because <laughs> everywhere you go, they'll be pouring you mint tea, mint tea and mint tea. Um, you're going to eat. A lot of chicken, a lot of chicken tangine, but it's so good. Uh, so let me just tell you some of the highlights. I mean, you're going to ride a camel if you so choose. If you don't want to ride the camel in the desert, we have an SUV that can take you um, as well. So we always have a backup plan. Um, you'll spend the night in the desert. You'll take a Moroccan cooking class, which is an amazing class. Um, you'll visit the markets and medinas for unique items. This is another place where people drop like there's no, when they shop, like there's no tomorrow. Um, I, I, even I got caught up in Morocco. I got the rug here in my office is from Morocco. I even got another rug I haven't even put down yet. But yeah, you get caught up. You get caught up. Um, you tour inside the Hassan the second mosque. This is important because a lot of the mosques you visit, we visit from the outside. Like for instance, in Abu Dhabi, we go to the Grand Mosque, but you don't go inside the room. And so the the uh, Hassan the second mosque is one of the few mosques that allow non-Muslims inside it. So um, I want you to 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 be be cognitive of that point. Um, you become Im immersed in Moroccan culture and you stay in unique accommodation. Like I said, from five star hotel to luxury tents to Riyadh. So um, it is a great um, journey and adventure across. Um, across Morocco. So as I go through this, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A and I will address them um, towards the end. Oklahoma, y'all, this is a new, a new trip. This is a Black history tour of Oklahoma. We spent a lot of time developing this tour. So I really, 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 really hope um, that you do consider this trip at least one u.s based trip um every year last year we did the navajo nation in arizona that trip was fabulous i learned so much we learned so much i gotta bring that trip back because it, it, was, it was just a wonderful tour so this year we're doing a black history tour of oklahoma and let me tell you why first of all the dates are october 4th through the 10th great time to be in oklahoma um the weather is mild then so what we're going to do we're going to just going to school you as the old folks said we're going to learn you we're going to you're going to learn something here but you're going to learn about the history of Oklahoma I didn't know that there was so much history there you know Oklahoma had a lot of black towns that were thriving I mean that was thriving we had black wall street we had our own cities our own banks our own stores our own merchants and then so then we had the Tulsa race massacre so we'll we'll start the trip in Oklahoma I mean, in OKC, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, um, we'll go through Tulsa and we go throughout Oklahoma. I think we stay in maybe three or four different hotels throughout this tour, just traveling across um, Oklahoma. We also so we'll learn about the um, the black history part of it with the with the race riots and all of the struggles and the civil rights movement. You also learn about the black cowboys, you know, and you'll learn how the name cowboy came to be and I won't tell you, but think about it. You know, why why would they call these grown men boys, right? The black cowboys. Anyhow. So you'll learn about the 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 um the origins of the name of the black cowboy. You will learn about the the Westerns and, and the rodeos. Um so and you'll learn about the contributions that Africans have made throughout the history um in, in Oklahoma. Um and also we'll visit some somber places like we'll visit the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum, which is dedicated um, to remembering those involved in the Oklahoma City bombing. And so it's a great mix of history, culture, and y'all know we're going to eat some good barbecue in Oklahoma. We've already picked out all the restaurants that we're going to eat at, so y'all going to get some good food um, while you're in Oklahoma as well. So um, this is a great tour to sign up. If you don't want to go far, um, you know, the flight's not too far to Oklahoma, um, and it's a great trip. It's a week-long trip, and it's going to be full of learning, and full of um, and full of fun. So um, definitely sign up um, 
for Oklahoma. And so I'm going to take a minute and stop. And just there, there's a question that says, is, are there veggie options who, for people who don't eat meat? Yes. I always have um, um, almost a vegetarian on every trip. Every now and again, I'm going to get a vegan. Um, but there's definitely, definitely, definitely always veggie options available. Um, I just ask that when you when you pull up the, um, when you sign up for the trip and we ask you, do you have any um, dietary requirements? Just let us know that, um, yes, you um, want to eat veggies. And then we, we have that um, plan ahead of time. Um, we cater to a lot of dietary requirements. Some people don't eat seafood. Some people don't eat bananas, whatever. Uh, we cater to that. Yes, Oklahoma is still open. So I'm going to tell you all something. Um, Oklahoma was starting out slow. Um, so I had closed Oklahoma at one point in time because a lot of folks that normally do my U.S. based tours are going to East Africa and East Africa is a week after Oklahoma. And they're like, Lori, I just can't do both. They're too close together. So I'm like, all right, let me switch Oklahoma to next year. But then folks started signing up. So it is open. Um, Shirley asked the question. So yes, you go to the website is open. If it's not remind me, I will reopen it, but people have been signing up for it. And so I said, it's on. So yes, Oklahoma is still, still open. So, all right. So those questions have been answered. All right. So let me go to the next tour here. East Africa. Ah, I say East Africa with a smile. This is a brand new trip that we're bringing to y'all. This trip is bad. That's all I got to tell you. It's bad. It's bad. I spent two weeks in East Africa back in December going through, going through the trip. I've stayed in all the hotels that we're going to stay in. And you're it, it, just going to love it. I am super, super, super excited about this East Africa trip. This is tour two because tour one sold out. Tour one sold out in less than a month. We had 30, 30, 30 plus people on tour one and I closed it down. And then um, I opened tour two to handle the overflow from tour, tour one. I love this trip so much. I'm staying in East Africa for almost a month. So I can lead both of these tours. I'm like, you know what? I'll just stay and do both. So pretty much I'm gone the month of October um, and I will be in, um, in East Africa. So the second tour, and yes, it's still open, is from October 27th to November 8th. And this, like I said, is one of those big, big, big bucket list trips. And I'm so excited to take you there. Um so let me tell you about it. East Africa just sounds exotic. We're going to go to Kenya. We're going to go to Tanzania. We're going to go to Zanzibar. And let me just tell you, Zanzibar at one point was a separate country, but Zanzibar is part of Tanzania. But so we're going to visit those three main places. And some of the highlights is, of course, there's the Serengeti. Um, the Serengeti is like no other place on earth. I've been to safaris in South Africa, which you guys know I love. Been to safari in Ghana. I've been not in Ghana and Senegal. Now I've been on I've been on a lot, lots and lots of safari. But when I went to the Serengeti, it just put a whole new meaning to it. So you of course, of course, of course, you're gonna go to the Serengeti. You're gonna be in, in the African bush and just observe an abundance of wildlife. Then it's trip is not just about wildlife. Um, it took me several years to put this trip together. I probably started planning an East Africa trip maybe in 2019, 2018, 2019. I've been looking for a trip and um, I couldn't find a partner that could help me um, have a culturally immersive trip as well as safari. Like I like safari. I love safari, but you can get safari out. Nobody wants to be on a safari. At least I don't for seven whole days. Right. So you got a couple of days of safari and then you want to see our people. We need to go to Africa. So you want to meet folks. So what we do on this trip, we're going to um, meet the Maasai tribe and learn about their culture. The Maasai are the tall, the tall, um, 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 East African, they usually live in Kenya and also Tanzania. And you'll see them just walking around. I, I was just surprised. They, they, they're tall, they got their sticks, they got that little checkered cloth, and they just 
walking down the street like anybody else. So um, they work, they have fought hard to keep their culture. Um, so you'll, you will learn about them. You'll also visit with the, ha the Hazebi tribe. If any of you guys follow me on Facebook or Instagram or in social media, you'll see that when I was there in December, I went out with the tribes. I went hunting and they shook, they taught me how to shoot a bow and arrow. So that was culturally culturally immersive. I was like, Lord, y'all pray for us, sister, because I'd be doing some things out there um, um, in this bush. But that was an amazing experience. Um, so you'll you'll meet with the the people in the different tribe. Um, you also have a close encounter with the giraffes at the giraffe center in Nairobi. So any of you guys have been on Instagram, you'll see the people feeding the giraffe and things of that nature. So, things of that nature. So you too will get your, your giraffe food and the giraffe will come to you and they'll eat out of your palms or your hands. So it is, it's a great, great, great experience. Um, you're also going to the Ngorongoro Crater, which is also another sight to behold. And then after you rip and after you run and after you go to a safari and you go hunting with the Hazebe and you go shopping, yada, 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 y'all, I'm going to take you to Zanzibar, the Spice Island. And we're going to stay in an all-inclusive resort on the beach. And I'm going to let you just relax, relax, and then take some time and enjoy the Indian Ocean. So that's how we're going to end this trip on East Africa. It's bad. That's all I got to say. It's bad. So East Africa is still open. Y'all sign up for it. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you. It'll be a trip of a lifetime. And I didn't even tell you half the stuff we got planned for you. So I got to leave a little bit of surprise in there um, um, for you. You can also sign up to do a hot air balloon ride as well um, over the Serengeti. That was amazing. Um, um, it's just, it's a low ride. Like I've done hot air balloon rides in Turkey and in Egypt where you go high, high, high. Um, in the Serengeti, they go a little low so you can still see the animals while you're in the hot air balloon. So that's great. Let me see what questions we have here. Oh, I think those are the same questions. Let me close those. Okay. All right. So, no more questions. So, that is East Africa Tour 2. It's still available. Sign up. Southern Africa. All right. Which is a little bit different than South Africa because now, like the East Africa Tour that's going to three different locations, the Southern Africa Tour is also taking you to three different destinations, um, three different countries. You are going to go to South Africa. You're going to go to Eswatini, um, which was formerly Swaziland, and you're going to get to Zimbabwe. So you're going to get three countries and one trip. You know you're going to be ripping and running, but it's going to be amazing. I did this trip in January um, with Bethany Baptist Church. So this trip has already been been tried, tried and true um, and runs pretty well. So let me tell you about this trip. We're going to start in Cape Town. Um, we're going to, you know, which is one of my favorite cities. You're going to explore the Cape Peninsula. You're going to go to Robin Island. You're going to do wine tasting. Um, and then from Cape Town, we fly to Durban. And then you're going to be there kind of like in the middle um, along the eastern eastern Cape. Cape, um, Eastern Coast, excuse me. Then you'll go to um, St. Lucia and we'll do like a safari on the water where you see the hippo, which is amazing. Um, you'll see the Indian Ocean as well. You'll go to Eswatini, which is a small, small, small country. And that is a beautiful day spent with a local and you'll learn about village life and um, Eswatini. Um, that's a great time. Then after doing that, you'll head up to Kruger, and um, we'll spend two nights um, um, right outside the gates of Kruger National Park. And you're going safari um, in Kruger. After that, then we go to Johannesburg. And while we're in Johannesburg, you're going to go to Soweto. You're going to see the Mandela House. Um, you're going to go and do some shopping in downtown Johannesburg. So it is an amazing trip. And then after Joburg, we're going to take y'all. Uh, to Zimbabwe, and you're going to go to the mighty, the mighty, the mighty Victoria Falls. It is a sight to behold. So, and we get to spend two nights in Victoria Falls, and you'll get to um, see the beauty, the beauty. I think they call it the thunder that roars, or the smoke that roars. Victoria Falls Fall is amazing. So, that is the trip um, to Southern Africa, and that is in November. The price for that trip is $74.99. Okay. 
All right. Then after Southern Africa, there's Dubai. Um, this is Dubai. This is the second tour of Dubai um, for this year. The first one was in March. The second one is here in November. And this is a tried and true trip. Um, Dubai is amazing. I mean, November 9th through the 16th. And let me tell you about some highlights of Dubai. You're going to go to, um, and this is another trip, good trip for those people who don't like to move around too much because we spend six nights at one hotel um, in Dubai. So you unpack once. We are, And of course, you're going to go to Dubai. It's going to be a five-star hotel. So we stay at the Hyde, which is a five-star hotel, lovely, lovely property. And um, while you're there, we will explore Dubai. Um, you go to the top of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. You go doom bashing in the desert, which is always a fun time um, in, fun, in four by four vehicle. You go to the gold and the spice shooks and you go shopping there. We go on a Dow dinner cruise and we ex um, explore the, the river um, on, on a boat, the dinner cruise. Um, that's a lot of fun. And then we also take a day trip over to Abu Dhabi and Abu Dhabi. Um, I would say the highlight of that trip, the, um, is the, the grand mosque, the Sheikh Zayed grand mosque is, um, probably one of the most beautiful mosques, um, in the world. And millions of people, um, come to visit, visit that every year. Um, but we also go to our, um, Casa Awatan, which I love as well, um, which is the presidential palace. And we have lunch there. We take a tour of, of Abu Dhabi. So we spend one day in Abu Dhabi. Um, and we also go to another Emirates, Sharjah, which is a lovely, lovely, lovely Emirates, which is a great contrast between the glitz and glam of Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Sharjah is, is kind of like the suburbs and where the normal people um, live. So Dubai, always a, a crowd pleaser, um, so much to do, so much to see. Um, you get a great combination of activities and a great combination of, uh, of free time. So um, Dubai, if it's on your list, you can go in November. It's there. Then the last trip that we have for 2024 that you can go on is Iceland. Uh, I think I had my group with the Iceland last year. They loved Iceland. Um, Iceland is, they said it was other world, world, worldly, worldly, if I can say that right. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. Um, we go in November. I know some people are afraid of the cold, like they don't want to go, go somewhere cold. It's a different experience. You're going for the experience. And actually, um, when they went last year, they said it was no colder than New York was in November. As long as you dress appropriately, you will be fine. Um, in Iceland, um, what you're going to do is, of course, you're going to hunt for northern lights. Uh, northern, the northern lights cannot be guaranteed. It is a natural, natural phenomena. So, um, but we do try to see them. And I think on the last year's trip, it did come in the middle of the night. So for those who got up, <laughs> for those who got up when the, um, when the northern lights came, they saw them. And for those who didn't, they saw the pictures of them. But it was, it's, it's a great great experience to see the northern lights also you'll see glaciers and gays and geysers as well it is beautiful the the ice caps the 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 um the streams of frozen waterfall it's a beautiful place to go and see um they have it's known as the the land of fire and ice because it does have a lot of ice um um, because of, you know, it's cold there and the waterfalls and the glaciers, but also it has um, a lot of geysers that are warm beneath the earth. So they, they shoot up like in Yellowstone. And so the earth is so high. There's a place where the group goes where they bake bread um, in the ground that the earth is so hot, they can bake bread. And they told me that that bread was delicious. So anyhow, so um, they bake bread in the ground. Um, they also go to the Blue Lagoon. So you're going to go to Iceland, you're going to go to the Blue Lagoon, and um, you're going to enjoy the, the hot spring, the natural hot springs outside. And then you're going to enjoy Icelandic cuisine. Um, they came back <laughs> after the trip and said, Lori, you know what? The food in Iceland was good. It was seasoned. It was really, it was really, uh, really good. So y'all don't sleep on Iceland. Don't sleep on Iceland. It's a nice getaway for November. Iceland trip is open. You know what? Go, go, try it. Try something new. It's $38.99 per person, double occupancy. All right. That's it for 2024. Uh, let me, oh, we still got some time left. Let me 
tell y'all about what we got in store for 2025. So if you got any questions on um, what we talked about in 2024, drop them in the chat. Or if you have a um, question um, about 2025, put them in a Q&A box for me. Okay, let's talk about this. 2025, we're starting out with Panama. Panama is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, we went to Panama last year in February. The group loved it. This is also one of those trips for people who don't like to change hotels a lot. We um, we stay in one hotel in Panama City, and then every day there's a day trip plan. So one day you're going to visit the Panama Canal. Another day you're going to visit the um, Embera and in, um, Indian because. Panama has, I think, about seven different tribes of indigenous Indians that are still still around. So we visit the Embera Indians, and they welcome you. We take the canoe over there. Um, they feed us lunch, simple lunch of, like, fried fish and plantain. But let me tell y'all, I went to Panama in 2018 when I went with the group, and I can still remember that fish. That fish was good. <laughs> and so they, they, they feed you like a simple local lunch of um, fish and plantain, mashed plantain. And then, um, so it's great. It's, it's a great city. Every day is an adventure. So it's good because we take you out in the day. Um, you come back to your hotel in the evening, and then you're pretty much um, on, on, on your own for dinner. So you have, we have a welcome dinner, we have a farewell dinner, and then in between, you can go and explore, explore on your own. So, um, oops, let me, what happened to my Panama? Okay. Yep. And so, um, so you can explore on your own um, in, in Panama. So we go on a train trip, we go to El Valle tour, we go to San Blas day tour, um, you're all you're all over in Panama. Great trip. Panama is open. Sign up. Let's go. So the next trip we have, folks have been asking me for it. You've been asked for, and you're hearing the first. This Vietnam trip hasn't even dropped yet. So I'm gonna try to get it out Friday. If we don't get it out Friday, it'll probably more than likely come out um, next week. Um, um, cause we got to get everything set up on the, on the website and all those details, but the trip is planned, everything's booked. Uh, so it's just time to let y'all know about it. We're going to Vietnam. We're going to Vietnam, March 9th, to March 20th. So folks have been asking when you're doing Vietnam, when you're doing Vietnam, we're doing it in March 9th to, to 20th, 2025. It'll be on the website, um, more than likely next week for you to, um, we just sign up. Vietnam will always hold a special place in my heart <laughs> because this is the trip. This is the trip to kind of transform my life because before I started working full time for Overton Travel, I worked in corporate America full time. So for about seven years, I did both. I, I had my full time day job and I was running Overton Travel at night. So I was doing, I was burning the, the midnight oil. And then when it was time to go to Vietnam, I did not have any more vacation time left. So I said, Lord, this must be the sign. And that's when I turned in my notice. And so September 28th, 2018 was my last day of working for someone else. And then on September 29th, 2018, I was on a plane to Vietnam. So um, Vietnam um, transformed, transformed my life as I know it. Great trip. And once you go, you'll know why I quit my job <laughs> to go. It's an amazing trip. We traverse um, the country of Vietnam. Vietnam's a long country. So we, we um, traverse it from south to north. We start, we start in Ho Chi Minh City, which is formerly known as Saigon. And then we go from Ho Chi Minh to Hue. Then I may be doing them in the wrong order, but we go to um, Hue. We go to Hoi An. We go to Halong Bay. Um, and then we end in um, Hanoi. The five cities we, we we go to, and each city has its own unique characteristic that, you, that you're going to love. So we start in Ho Chi Minh City, and you glide along the serene um, the Mekong Delta. We also visit the Kuchi Tunnel, which were um, instrumental um, to the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. That is a very um, informative day. Uh, you go to Halong Bay and you see all those big limestone stone rock coming out of the water. Um, we do a city tour, Ho Chi Minh City. We go back, we step back in time 
to the beautiful city of Hoi An. Hoi An is so lovely, just a lovely little town. And then we go to Hawaii, Hawaii which is, um, is an imperial city. And um, we travel through the city by, by rickshaw. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great, 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 great trip. And what I like, um, one of the things I like most about Vietnam is that it changes people's perception of the country. Because here in America, uh, in, the, in the U.S., when you say Vietnam, the first thing you think about is the Vietnam War. We equate Vietnam to war. No, Vietnam is a country. It's not just about a war. And it's a beautiful, beautiful country. And when you go there, it's interesting how you have to understand the perspectives of you see, you see things because we call it the Vietnam War. When you go to Vietnam, they call it the American War. So just think about that. Um, you're going to learn a lot on this trip. It's $49.99 per person, double occupancy, life-changing, amazing trip. Also, um, you learn the food is good in Vietnam. You know, I like to eat. So wherever we go, we're going to have good food. Um, Vietnam was colonized by the French at some point. So the cuisine is great. Um, it has French influences, great breads, great cheeses. That was another thing I, I was just blown away way by. I wasn't expecting um, the beautiful cuisine there. All right. So after Vietnam, we're going to do classic Dubai. I'm not going to talk too much about this because this is the classic Dubai trip that I've done probably five, six times already. And so um, it is a crowd pleaser. It's a good trip. It's tried and true. I have the same tour guide. We stay at the same hotel. Boom. It is. If you want kind of like a solid, solid, solid trip, this is this is it. I'll tell you a little bit later about the Lux Dubai trip. But anyhow, but classic Dubai, I talked about that trip already. And so that is going to be in the first week of April. Peru. Peru is great. Um, this is another one of those bucket list trip. Uh, you're going to want to see Machu Picchu um, before you die, if you can. And um, so this is a lovely trip. Um, also a bit of an adventure as well, because you're going to um, fly into Lima. You're going to spend two nights in Lima. Then you're going to fly to Cusco. You're going to spend some time in Cusco. Um, I think maybe one or two nights there. Um, then you'll go to Machu Picchu. You take the train up to Machu Picchu, which is great. Then you'll stay in the Sacred Valley of the Incas, um, which is amazing. And the properties here are so unique. Um, the people who, who went last year, they loved it. And it's very, um, um, it's very nice for the area. I, I think they are culturally appropriate property, which is, which is great. So you get to do a lot of moving around. You get to see the, uh, um, the alpacas, the the llamas, um, you get to do a lot of shopping um, in the in the markets there as well. A lot of colorful clothing that you will experience in Peru. So this is a great trip. Um, um, always a crowd please as well. This is forty five ninety nine a person, double occupancy. Turkey, in my opinion, Turkey is probably one of the most underrated destinations. Um, that I've been to. I didn't know what to expect when I went to Turkey, but I was blown away. This trip is absolutely fabulous. Um, I didn't know much about Turkey. And so that's what I love about it. So it's May 15th to the 25th. We did this trip in 2022. I did make some tweaks to it. It was, it was about 15 days um, before. It was a long trip. Um, it was an expedition throughout Turkey. So we rode around on the bus. Um, which was a which was a great bonding experience, um, but this time around I took out some of the bus rides and we're gonna fly, we're gonna fly to some of the places. So that's why the trip is shorter this time around because there's less time um, on, on on the bus. So Turkey is the only country that spans two continents. Uh, it spans Asia and it also spans um, Europe. So you have the the European culture, the Asian culture, and uh, it's all in, in, intertwined. It has a lot of ancient history there. I didn't realize the Romans, you know, the Romans and their quest to conquer Europe, they spent a lot of time in Turkey. So you will see in Turkey a lot of the um, the Roman ruins. Ruins. It looks like Italy and in and, 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 and parts of Turkey. Um, and we have an amazing uh, the tour. I have let me let me just stop for a minute. 
in general, I have been blessed with amazing tour guides. So I have great, great tour guides. And I usually try to keep, when I get a good one, I try to keep them. So when I want to go to the trip again, like in Vietnam, Buffalo, I got Buffalo every time we go to Vietnam. When I go to South Africa, I like to have Godfrey. When we go to Turkey, I got Hakan. You know, Hakan was in encyclopedic knowledge uh, of Turkey. It was amazing. So we always have very knowledgeable guys to um, to show us around. And all of our guys are usually local from, from the place we visit. So they speak the language. They know the culture. So that's another kind of tidbit about Overton travel trips. So um, in Turkey, you'll, you'll visit Istanbul. Um, you'll visit Cappadocia. Cappadocia is one of those in my list of most beautiful places on earth, I, I will list Cape Town, I will list um, Santorini, also on that list is Cappadocia. Absolutely gorgeous, like no other place that you will ever, ever want to see. Um, you learn about the early Christians and um, what they did to, you know, to practice their religion. You know, we here, we have the freedom to go to church. Like, you know, you get up on Sunday, you get dressed up or dressed down or whatever. You go to church, you can practice your religion. The early Christians were persecuted. So they would go up into the mountain and practice their religion in the caves to practice. So we get to see some of the caves where they used to go and hide um, to, to, to practice um, what they believe in to serve, serve God. So it was just, just life altering. Um, um, life changing to me to see what people did um, in the early days, what the early Christians had to do. Um, so Cappadocia, uh, you go to Ephesus and uh, so many other places you go on this trip to Turkey. Um, we have the hot air balloon ride over Cappadocia, um, which is a sight to behold. So it's just a beautiful trip. It is an expedition and exploration you'll learn, learn a lot. So definitely sign up for this Turkey trip. Um, you will be, you will be pleasantly surprised. This is $53.99 per person. South Korea, we got a new one. I got a new trip. So y'all, we, I'm trying to bring you some new stuff as well. So this is a brand spanking new trip, um, that we are bringing about. And, um, I have to think, um, my team member Thea for helping to put this together. Like I mentioned, I my team is expanding to be in parts of Asia as well. Uh, so I will have people that have experience in visiting the Asian countries on my on my list. So South Korea is going to be May. We're still finalizing the dates for this trip, but we put together the itinerary already, and um, it's gonna it's gonna be a delight. Um, we're going to go to South Korea, you know, there's South Korea, and North Korea. So we'll be in South Korea, which is fine to go to. Um, of course, we'll go to Seoul and we're going to um, um, ex explore the city, city of Seoul. We will do traditional um, Korean things. Um, we're going to go to the Korean barbecue. And if y'all ever had that Korean barbecue, what the Koreans do to meat, I don't know what they do to it, but it's amazing. Um, we'll drink Korean beers. Um, we are going to um, take a photo ops and the traditional handbook. If you see the way the, the dresses that the Koreans wear, traditional dresses, similar to how like the Japanese women, how they wear the kimonos, we'll do a photo shoot there as well. Um, we'll go to the beautiful Nami Island and see the serene gardens of the morning calm. Um, you'll explore Korea's complex past and you'll go to the DMZ, um, which is the demilit demilitarized zone. And you'll see where North and South Korea, um, where, where they are divided. So you'll have a tour, tour there. Um, you go to Busan, um, South Korea's largest city, and then you'll go to some of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we got a new one for you. Oh, and of course, Korean is known for, um, they're really big into beauty treatments. So makeups and creams and, you know, facial products. So you'll get to explore all of that. And of course, you cannot go to South Korea, or at least you can't go to South Korea where Overton travel and not indulge in the Korean spas. So then all they're known for their spas and their relaxation and their beauty treatment. So you're going to come back with a glow from your trip to Korea. That's going to be in May. Um, we're working on finalizing that now. So 
stay tuned as we send out a new trip alert. So always trying to bring you something new and different. And like I said, we don't box us into where we go. So the, the world, the world is open. Morocco, I've already talked to you about Morocco. Um, it's the same trip that we've done um, this year. So I won't spend more time on that amazing sojourn um, across um, across the country. Bali, love, love, love Bali. Bali is June 3rd through the 14th, uh, 2025. I have a trip to Bali this year. People, My group is leaving for Bali next week. So the 2024 Bali trip, of course, is closed since they're leaving, I think next Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. They're leaving next week. So if you missed the trip to Bali this year, run sign up for bali next year folks have already started for trying to signing up for bali so this is going to be probably one of the hot trips for next year well there's always lots of hot trip but this is one that um folks have, are really excited about and they've been telling me hey Lori, we're coming to bali we're coming to bali so it should be fun um i have one client who went to bali she's a she's a regular she, she's been a lot of trips trip with me she came back from bali and she said Lori, if i never go anywhere else again i'm good she came back all zenned out from Bali, all relaxed and everything like that. Bali is great. Bali is one of the few gifts that I give you, which is vacation. You get to relax a little bit, but not after you run around. So the way the Bali trip is designed is you spend four nights in Ubud. So you go up into the mountain um, in Ubud, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, you, so you spend four nights there and... Um, you definitely you do all your running around. You go see all the temples. Um, you go do a cooking class. You go do, um, if you want to do the flying dress tour, you would do that um, in, in Ubud. And then after you spend four nights in Ubud, then you drive down to the beach area and you go to Nusa Dua and you spend four nights at a resort on the beach and you can just relax. So it is a great trip when you run, 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 run. And then you kind of go, ah, you go down south, you get your spa treatment. You kind of just, you know, lie on the beach with a drink with an umbrella in it. And you can kind of just relax a little bit and just be zenned out um, and, and Bali. So I'm just going to go namaste, people. <laughs> so enjoy Bali. Bali is four, um, $4,099, um, including, um, you know, flights, hotels, and all that, all your tours, all that good stuff. Great, 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 great trip to Bali. What's the next one? Lux Dubai. Okay. So let me explain to you guys what Lux Dubai is all about. It is going to be, the date here is actually wrong. The Lux Dubai trip it's actually going to be in November. Yeah, so um, that trip is November. And so let me explain to you. So Lux Dubai is very similar to the classic Dubai, except I get a lot of people. I get some of you guys who just want to step up the Lux a little bit. So on the class, classic Dubai, we do stay in a five-star hotel. Um, the Hyde is, is lovely. But then there's five-star and then there's like five-star plus. So I wanted to give to my people who wanted just a little bit more luxury. This is your answer. So in this trip, we spend um, four nights in, in Dubai, um, in downtown Dubai, and we've been at the Sofitel, which is lovely. I stayed at the Sofitel um, in March. So when the group left Dubai, um, in March, I stayed a couple extra days and I checked out some hotel and I chose to stay at the Sofitel. And when I stayed there, I said, I, right, this is where the group is going to want to stay. So it stepped up the luxury a notch, um, with the hotel selection. So four nights, um, at the Sofitel, and then I take you out to the desert and you actually spend two nights at a resort in the desert. Um, amazing. I think it's Bob Al Sham, if I got the name of it. So I actually visited that place as well. Lovely, love. This is not tents or anything. This is a resort with, you know, regular rooms and things of that nature. And so you get to spend two nights there and um, it does, it does up the luxury a bit for this trip. So if you want just a tad bit more um, luxury, I said a lot more luxury than I would choose the Lux Dubai 
over the class of Dubai. Class of Dubai, tried and true, wonderful trip. Luxury is just, hmm, you want a little bit more bling, a little more glitz, a little more glamour, try Lux Dubai. Okay. Colombia. We're doing Colombia in November. Colombia is a great trip. It's November 16th to the 23rd. Um, in Colombia, what we'll do is we will visit um, Bogota as well as Cartagena. So in, we spend three nights in Bogota, four nights in Cartagena. Uh, while in Bogota, you get some free time um, to kind of hang out on your own and visit the city. But then we also do um, the city tour of Bogota, um, where you go through the historic district La Candelaria um, with the cobblestone streets and the colonial bu um, building. And you go up high on the hill with beautiful views over 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 Bogota. You also get to go to the Gold Museum. It's a large collection of pre-Hispanic gold artifacts in the world, the world. So the Gold Museum is absolutely um, um, amazing. So that's what you'll do primarily in Bogota. Oh, and then also we have the optional tour to go visit the Salt Church. So the group that did that last year, I think in 2022, they went to Colombia. They loved it. They love, love, love. They love the salt, um, going to the salt church. I just didn't include it because it's a lot of walking. So um, it's really not made for people with mobility issues. So it's an optional tour you can sign up for. Then after spending three nights in Bogota, you're going to fly to Cartagena. And then in Cartagena, you're going to um, visit the Wall City, the Wall City of Gethsemane. Um, you're going to go to Palenque to visit the San Basilio de Palenque. This is one of the highlights. Um, it is a day exploring Afro-Colombian culture. The, the Palenque are, is one of the, I think, one of the first free towns in Latin America. Um, from it's inhabited by the by enslaved people um, and it's a free town so you'll learn about the traditional food you have lunch there um, you have some cultural immersion there as well um, also when in Colombia you're going to do a rum tasting class you're going to do a mojito making class you're going to learn how to taste chocolate you know it's rum and chocolate tasting you'll do you'll learn how to make mojitos and you'll learn how to make ceviche so Great learning experience there. And then what I'm trying to do on these trips, after you run, 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 then the last day you go and you visit the Rosario Island and you get to spend the day on the beach. You take the boat ride over to Rosario Island and you spend the day relaxing on the beach. You come back to Cartagena, have your farewell dinner, and then you come back home. So that's the trip to Colombia. It's $39.99 per person. Absolutely wonderful trip. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Okay, now, okay, I'm bringing something new to y'all. Something new. Been working on this for a while. Had a hard time putting it together, but now it's done. Y'all going to Abu Dhabi and the Maldives. Yes, Abu Dhabi and the Maldives in December. Let me tell you something. I have been searching high and low for a resort in the Maldives that will fit my client base. Let me tell you why. All these single ladies, they're not single, but these solo ladies come to me and say, Lori, I want to do the Maldives, I want to do the Maldives, I want to do the Maldives, and I want to stand in an overwater bu bungalow. 99.9% .9 the, of the overwater bungalows in the Maldives have king size beds. They're made for couples. So, I mean, I know y'all love your friends, but you don't want to sleep with your friends for like three, four nights in the Maldives. And so I could not find a resort that had king size beds. I would call the resort and say, oh, yeah, we can bring in a cot. We can bring in we can bring in another bed for the second. I said, don't nobody want to sleep on a cot. I'm sorry. And, and so um, I could not find a resort um, that had two beds. And so I was I was sending honeymooners there. No problem. Finally, 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 finally. We found the Moven Pick, the Moven Pick and the Maldives. They have two beds in a room. So my ladies, if you want to come with your girlfriend, you want to come with your, you know, your friend, your daughter, whoever, I got two beds for you in the Maldives. So the Moven Pick Resort um, um, has been the answer to my prayer. So usually when you go to the Maldives, you're going to have to stop in Dubai. If you fly Emirates, you go um, New York. Dubai, Dubai, and then you go 
um, to the Maldives. So I've done, I have, you already say I already have two trips to Dubai already. I didn't want to do another Dubai trip. So um, I said, let's do Abu Dhabi. So we're going to fly on Etihad Air, 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 Airlines and uh, we're going to stop in Abu Dhabi. So we split the trip up um, between three nights in Abu Dhabi and then three nights in the Maldives. And this is great because I do Abu Dhabi on the Dubai trip, but we only spend one day in Abu Dhabi. So you really just see the mosque and the um, Casa al -Tan. You don't see a lot of, of uh, other items that um, Abu Dhabi has to offer. And uh, I spent about a week in Abu Dhabi a couple years ago. And so um, it's great. So what we're going to do is you're going to of course do a city tour of, of Abu Dhabi while you're there. You're going to have luxury afternoon tea. So you're actually going to go to Emirates Palace and you're going to have tea at the palace. So that's going to be great. Um, you're going to go to Casa Al Hussein Palace, which is a wonderful um one wonderful palace and it talks about how emirati life was before they struck gold i mean before they struck um oil over there um you'll also go to the falcon hospital this is awesome you know the falcons are a sacred animal in um, emirati culture i mean kind of like how the bald eagle is sacred here the falcons are sacred so if you own a falcon there's a hospital you take them to and you take them to just for treatment like they go there they get their nails cut they get their wing clipped um you can take a falcon you can buy a first class airline ticket and have your falcon sit in the seat next to you these people that they don't play with the falcon it is a protected bird it is sacred so you get to go to the Falcon Hospital and you see how the Falcons um, are treated. I, ju I just found it fascinating. Um, also, what we do on this trip, which is a little bit different, is yes, we have gone to the mosque um, on previous trip to Dubai. But what we do differently on this trip, we go at night when it's lit up. And so I have been told that seeing the mosque at night is a totally different experience than um than seeing it during the day. Um, it's cooler, it's not as high, it's beautifully lit. So it's a serene experience seeing a mosque at night. And then of course you get to go on another desert um, barbecue, a desert safari, but you're doing it in Abu Dhabi this time. So, so you're gonna spend three nights in Abu Dhabi and then we're gonna fly from Abu Dhabi over to the Maldives and you spend three more nights in the Maldives. If you want to stay long in the Maldives, I can certainly arrange that. If you say, Lori, I want four, five, six, whatever, um, we can add, we can add on extra days to the Maldives for you. So just want to let you know that. And in the Maldives, we will be staying at an all-inclusive resort. So all of your food will be included. Um, your alcohol will be included. It's not all inclusive like you would think in the Caribbean, as far as you know, they'll they'll there's like a mini bar where you can get your drinks from. Um, but you know, you won't go hungry, you won't go thirsty um in the Maldives, and we'll be in overwater bungalows. So that is just going to be serene, serene, serene. So sign up for the Maldives trip. Um, that should be coming out soon as well. So um, you're hearing about the Maldives first here um, at, at the webinar. So give us another week or so to get that out on the um, on, on the website. So let me just, so that's what we have going so far. Let me just tell you about some of the other stuff that we have planned that will be coming out real soon. We have South Africa, the essence of the Eastern Cape. That's the trip that I took in March. This is one of my absolute favorite trips as well. Um, this explores the Eastern Cape, um, which is the village life. Um, this is also a very one of my higher end trips where we stay in all five star properties. They're all boutique properties. So we are service, like it's all about service. If you've been with me to the Eastern Cape, just tell somebody what it's all about. I don't think I do a good job. I know I don't do a good job telling you about this trip because it should be sold out every time I offer it. I, I, I'm not even playing. This is an amazing trip. The properties that we stay at, Oceana is probably my favorite property of all the ones that we stay at. Um, and I can take no more than 15 people, more maybe 12, 12 to 15 people um, on this trip because of the uniqueness of the properties that we stay at. Um, Italy. Oh Lord, you've been asking me for Italy forever. It's coming and it's going to be Rome, Florence, Vinny, Venice, and yes, the Amalfi coast as well. That's coming in July. We're working on that. 
We're also working on Central Europe, brand new trip, Vienna, Prague, and Budapest for y'all who have been everywhere. You've been to London, you've been to Paris, you've been to Rome, you know, you've been to Germany, you've been all throughout Europe. Come with me to Central Europe. It's up. Come me to Vienna, Prague, and Budapest. It's coming in April. What's also coming is the South Africa Discovery Tour. That's my tried and true tour that I do every year in August. That's coming soon as well. Greece. I'm working on Greece um, for June or September. I got to see where it's going to fit in, in the calendar. Um, Greece is always a crowd pleaser. So it's coming. It's coming, y'all. Oh, in Japan. That's a new one we're working on. And so we want to do Japan in the fall um, after the heat of the summer is over and the leaves are starting to turn. So let's do Japan. It's going to be in the fall. Um, we just starting to work on that. So give us a couple of weeks to get this together. And Switzerland. Switzerland. I went to Switzerland last year and folks have been asking me about it ever since. And um, it's coming. Is coming. You know, a lot of these new trips, you know, it takes, you know, it takes some time to do some research, hotel, find the right partner that I want to work with that's in country. So um, some trips take a little bit longer than, than others to put together, but it's coming. It's coming. Switzerland's coming. And then what else we got? East Africa again. So let me tell you. So, you know, I already, you know, I think East Africa is one of my favorite bucket list trips. But so this says Kenya, Tanzania, and Zanzibar, but we got something else for y'all. So not just Kenya, Tanzania, and Zanzibar, we're throwing in Rwanda. You want to go gorilla trekking? Ah, we got that for you. We're throwing in Uganda. Ah, you want to do that? We're throwing in um, Ethiopia, Ethiopia as well. So ah, I've been working with my, 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 um, my partner in East Africa. So we got some stuff brewing for you. We got some really good stuff in East Africa that's coming. So sit tight, hang in with me, and it's coming through. And like I mentioned, Ethiopia. So we're working on Ethiopia as kind of an add-on to East Africa, but I say, you know what? Ethiopia is a standalone trip in and of itself. It doesn't need to be added on to something. Ethiopia, you can easily spend your eight to 10 days um, exploring Ethiopia, um, learning about the churches in the rocks, learning about the lost tribe. So, um, you know, Ethiopia, I believe it's the only country in in South Africa it was the only country in South Africa that I'm not South in Africa that has never been colonized. The Italians tried to do it, but they couldn't do it. So Ethiopia is very, very proud um, of that the heritage. So I think is that the last one. Yeah. So those are the those are the trips we're working on um, um, right now. Um, also, we're working on some cruises. So I got to get these cruises going because I know. Um, folks, every time I turn around, y'all telling me, oh, I went on a cruise here, I went on a cruise there. I'm like, look, let me look, let me do some cruises so y'all can go on the cruises with me. So um, Kim and I have been working on some cruises. So we gotta, we gotta get them, get them, um, get them out to you. So cruises are coming up. Um, if there's a place that you want to go and I haven't mentioned it, drop it in the chat um, because I feed off of you guys or where you want to go. So uh, if I if I hear the rumblings that people want to go here, there, what have you, then I can start working on them. So that's what we have. That brings us to 20 trips um, next year once all of this is done. And then that's 20 group trips. And then I also do private tours. So um for churches, you know, we I had two church groups last year. I do um, tours for, you know, the sorority groups, the theater groups, family groups. Um, so you just see some of it, the ones that are open to the public. But we're also always constantly working on, you know, people that are going um, on their on their private trips as well. So we got a we got a lot going on. So. Um, month is over thinking about you know where's your next destination um if you don't see it on the list you can always email me at laurie at overton travel.com you can email thea my group manager at groups at overton travel.com let us know where you're interested in going um we'll try to add it as a group trip if we can't add it as a group trip but you have enough people in your own group we can do private trips um for for you for you as well so um be cognitive um, of that because group trips are amazing. I love, love, love them, but sometimes you may not want to be in a group. And so we can plan, um, a group for just you and your friends and family, or just something, just a couple trip. I just had a couple 
planned a trip for two to Cuba. Um, they got back recently. I planned uh, um, one of my other clients, her 60th birthday. She wanted to go to Bali and Singapore. So she and her husband went there. A group of girlfriends um, last summer went to Greece. So, you know, we, we do other things besides what you see uh, on the website. So let us know where you're planning to go next. And then, uh, oops, I went to that video started right away. But here we go. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> that's right don't you forget if you travel travel with overtime all right thank you all so so much um for attending i got some questions here so i'm going to stop sharing my screen and let me address some of the questions that are here so let's see what we're going are you planning a Ghana trip for July 2025? Yes, I will be planning a Ghana trip for July 2025. But so this is why I'm hesitant. I'm just going to be real with y'all on this. I have a Ghana trip for this year in July. Ghana in July is expensive. Ain't no way around it. It's expensive. The flights alone in Ghana, to Ghana in July are over $2,000 just for the flight. Ask anybody that's going this year. They look at the airline ticket, 2G just for the flight before you eat a piece of bread so i, I want if i plan a trip y'all gotta go on it <laughs> it's not it's not me that's the lawyer prices are going up the, the cost of bread is going up so that's why i haven't put it out there yet because i saw the price i'm like that ah, go on ain't nobody gonna go so i do want to go um also july 2020 next year is panifest so um, usually things are a little bit higher during the festival season. Um, so Panifest is always nice to go. So I will I, I will be planning a trip for July, July, early August, because uh, that's when Panifest is um, for next year. I'll probably plan it um, after I come back from Ghana this year. I'm going to be do, doing some some research with some different vendors. You know, I'm going to do a little research while I'm there and gone in July. So it will more than likely come out. Um, we'll see after I get back. Uh, I may get it out before, but more than likely it'll come back um, after I come back from, from Ghana this year. Okay. Um, what is the U.S. trip for 20? I don't know what the U.S. trip is going to be for 2025. So y'all let me know. I have you know, I, I usually work with the same, same company on my U.S. trips. And he emailed me, um, last week said, Lori, where are you going for 2025? And I'm like, I don't know. So um, let me know where you, where, where you want. You know, I know some people wanted to go to, to, to California, Napa. Um, um, what well, I had a couple of things in mind. And so either I'll dream up something or um, you guys let me know. I know some people want to go to the national park. We did Arizona last year, which was amazing. So let me know where you want to go in 2025. Will Osaka be a part? Um, Osaka, I'm not sure. We we just started planning. I think it is going to be part of the Japan tour. I definitely know we will, of course, have um, Tokyo, of course, have Kyoto, and maybe Osaka. So when we're planning it, uh, I think we'll include Osaka and uh, Mary, maybe Hiroshima, Hiroshima as well. But I'm pretty sure Osaka will be part of the, the Japan tour. And date for East Africa 25, East, East Africa 2025, I have dates. It is like the second week in October. Um, we come back on October 16th. I know that. So I think it's like the 4th through the 16th or something. So um, so it'll be, er it'll be early October, put, put it that way. And date for Japan 2025. Um, yeah, so it will be either September or October. It will be in the fall. So we're, I just got to see how it fits in with my other tour. Cause usually, usually September and October are pretty heavy months. Um, for Overton travel, we, we do three, usually at least three, three to four trips in, in September, uh, and, and October just always just works out to the fall. The fall is pretty, um, pretty busy for us. Um, and then. You know, I thought about Jordan, Adrian, Adrian, I thought about it when I was planning a trip. This was before the, um, before the, um, the Israel Hamas war. 
um, had broken out, I had actually planned. I had planned a trip to, it was, it was, it was planned and about to launch. I had planned a trip to Israel and we we're going to go over to Jordan because I wanted to go visit Petra and visit Wadi Rum. So I had it all planned out and um, it didn't get out last year and I was going to bring it again. And then so um, when the war broke out, I kind of pumped the brakes on that. So, so, so that, to answer your question, yes, I have thought about Jordan. I just don't know when it will come out. Um, um, although I don't think anything's going on in Jordan, but folks are kind of scared to go to the Middle East right now. Um, and just want to make a quick note about that. Um, I just, I just had two groups come back from Egypt and when the war in Israel and Hamas, the Israel Hamas war broke out, people started canceling Egypt right and left. And I was like telling you, I said, nothing's going on in Egypt. <laughs> Nothing is happening in Egypt. And so I had about 45, maybe 45 people booked initially for Egypt and then folks canceled. So we had about 30 at the end. They went and they loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. So, um, so I, I thank God that we were able to take folks um, to, to Egypt and not ha ha have a problem um, with it. So I would go back to Egypt if somebody's interested because they had a great time in Egypt. Um, no problem there. Um, Jordan will probably wait for a little bit. Okay. Let me see the next question. Do you ever go to Australia, New Zealand? Yeah. We are in the midst of planning Australia right now. It will more than likely be March 2026. So that is that is in the works. So Australia and New Zealand, Zealand um, is in the works for March 2026. It's a big trip, y'all. You know, it's big. It's big. It's big. You're going to go to Australia, go big or go home. So and then you want to throw New Zealand in. So you're looking at three weeks. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a big trip and our Antarctica, I've been thinking about it, but not actively. It's more, it's, it's, it's still a thought. It's not an active thought yet. So if we do do Antarctica, it's more like a 26, maybe 27, um, type trip, but yeah, it, it is definitely, but Australia, New Zealand, definitely 2026 Antarctica, maybe 2026. Um, if I can squeeze it in and for the dates again for East Africa, don't um, it'll it'll come out. I know it's early October. I believe it's the fourth through the sixteenth. I definitely know we're coming back on the fifteenth and sixteenth. I'll send it out. Um, it hasn't been finalized yet. I mean, we I given the dates. We started working on booking everything, and so the dates I'm targeting now is that early October. So I just have to make sure my hotels and everything are available. But I've I've Selected the dates that I, I want to go. October is a really good time um, to 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 go. Um, so that was East Africa 2025. And then Ireland, Germany. I don't have any trip planned for Ireland or Germany. And so hmm, that's food for thought. Um, um, Germany is amazing. Ireland is too. So they they could make it into, into the rotation, but probably more like for 2020. because I don't know much about them yet. So I got to search on them. So they would be more like 2026. 2025 is stuff that I'm trying to get out that I've already been researching. So um, Ireland and Germany would be more like a 2026. And then someone asked about Morocco. Um, so I'm going to just talk about Morocco. Wait, before I get there, date for Switzerland. Switzerland would be in the fall. That would probably be September, October. Uh, you want to get the height of the summer out and you want to go there before it gets really cold as well. So I was in Switzerland last year, September 5th to the 12th, and the weather was perfect. So September, October of next year um, um, is when we're going to go. I literally just started working on the Switzerland trip, trying to figure out, you know, I'm trying, uh, whatever, I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking of combining Switzerland with Italy, like maybe starting in Zurich, ending in Milan. So you get some of that Swiss Riviera, Italian Riviera feel. You never know. I don't know if I want to throw in Montreux in there. So you get the French feel. So it's a, it's a lot of move, moving parts. I want to take you up to the mountains and, and um, so you can see the Alps. So I'm working out a lot. One thing I do know, it has to include the, um, the train, the, um, the Glacier Express, the Bernier Express. I took the train rides in Switzerland. It was amazing. So I'm just trying to kind of work it 
work out all the moving pieces because there's so much I want to include. I may not get it all in the in 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 this one trip, but look for it in September, um, September, October, October time time frame. Okay, so then there is a question about Egypt, about Morocco. I love Morocco. Uh, Morocco is an expedition, uh, an adventure throughout the country. Um, you will hit five five cities. In five or six cities, no, you stay in seven different hotels in Morocco. Um, so it is one of those get up and go, get up and go, get up and go trips. So you go to Casablanca, you go to Rabat, you go to Fez, you go to Marrakesh, um, you spend the night in the desert uh, and, a, and a luxury tent. You get to see a nomad family and you spend time with them. So it is a great trip. We have cooking classes in Marrakesh. Um, we get to visit the Medina, the Medinas, I call it an organized symphony. It is chaotic, but it's organized. We hire two, two tour guides for the day that we go through the Medinas and Fez. So we don't lose anybody. And thank God I have never, never lost a person, person yet, um, um, in, in the Medina. So, um, Charlene, if you have more question about Morocco, I can speak to you, um, um oh you're on the trip to morocco oh great 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 so we can speak offline i'll talk to you in detail um about it. it it's a it's a great trip um like i mentioned we ride camels through the desert but for those of people who don't want to ride a camel we have um suvs that can take you throughout the desert um a, as well so um there's always option okay let me see are you still considering Black Paris? People just got back from Black Paris. <laughs> so my group came back from Paris uh, in March. No, May. They just got back from Paris in May. So yeah, I, you know what? It's so funny. I'm, before this call, I was working on a trip. I don't know if March is too soon, but I was actually working on a trip for Portugal again. Portugal um, and Black Paris. And, Mar and, I, and I always like to correct people. Black Paris is just one day tour. There is no, there's no tour. There's no parts of Paris to consider Black Paris. It's a tour of Paris um, with an emphasis on Black culture, um, um, the African culture um, um, from Africa, the African American culture in Paris, the Afro uh, Franco culture as well. Um, but yeah, so I was looking at something actually earlier today and. Um, reached out and to one of my um, um, suppliers um, in Paris and said, hey, can we combine Black Paris with the Champagne region? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to let you know. Um, I'll let you know about that. Let me see what else. What's the question? Do I ever go to Nigeria or Senegal? And the answer is yes. I've never gone to Nigeria. Um, and um, so the Nigeria... Tourism infrastructure um, isn't that strong yet. Most most of the people that I know that go, not most, everyone that I know that has gone to Nigeria has gone to Nigeria personally with somebody, not on a tour. So I don't have any partners in Nigeria yet. So I, I have no plans to uh, go to Nigeria right now. Senegal, we just went to Senegal last year in, um, in March. Went to Senegal March 2023. And um, so I do do Senegal. Um, it probably won't come back into rotation probably into 2026 though. So, um, but yes, we do. Um, we have, we have done Senegal and um, it'll probably come back. It's one, some trips are in the, in the rotation every year. Some are in there twice a year and some come back every two or three years, depending on um, the, the popular, the popularity um, of, of the trip. So all right, I think I've answered all the questions that were in the Q&A box. If you have any more questions, um, please keep putting them in. And if, I'll stay on as long as you guys have questions. So I know some of you um, only had an hour or so. So thank you for that. I, I finished the crux of the presentation um, within that time limit. But, you know, if you have questions, I will try to give you um, answers. So I'm just trying to click off the one that I've already um, answered so I can clear, clear the screen here. But I think I've answered all the ones 
and the Q and A box. Hold on. All right. So let me check the chat. Uh, the trip to gray. <laughs> uh, you want to go on all all the trip? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you went with me to Beth. We have a new trip coming up with Bethany. So um, uh, I'll announce it soon. So I'm not gonna let the cat out the bad dawn. So more trips. Um, and yeah. So Leslie. Um, so let me just tell you something else. So Leslie was asking, am I going to have a trip, a session for people going to Morocco this year? The answer is yes. We have a session for every single trip. So every trip about four weeks, at least three to four weeks, about a month before the trip, we always have a Zoom call similar to this call. And we go over all the detail um, of the trip. Because what I find is that that month mark is where you really get serious and you're like, holy smoke, I am going on a trip. And that's when you get serious about what am I going to pack? What do I need to wear? You know, all, all the questions. So that's when we have the trip, have, have the Zoom call. If I have it too soon, you're going to forget about it. Been there, done that. So around three to four weeks is when we have the Zoom call and go over the details of the trip. But what we'll do is um, we create travel guides for every trip. And I just I just had the conversation with um, Thea yesterday, actually, my group manager, and I said, hey, um, let's send a travel guide out early for Morocco. We we just did the trip, so we know the details of it. So we'll send out the travel guide um, to you guys early that answers most of the um, the the question that you have about the trip. So for, for those of you who like to prepare um, a bit earlier, we'll get information out to you um, earlier. Um, Brenda had a question about, do we need visas for East Africa? Yes, you do need a visa, um, but they're pretty easy to, to get. You get them online. Uh, for Kenya, you don't need a visa, but you do need to fill out like an electronic authorization form, um, and you do that online. Uh, and for Tanzania, you do need a visa, and you fill that out online. And so for those of you who have gone with me to Ghana, I know you have, once you have gone to Ghana and have done that visa, you can go anywhere in the world. <laughs> so if you've done the Ghana visa and survive, you can do just about anything else. But you do need visas for um, for for Tanzania. And uh, I'll start sending that information out to you over the next week or so um, to tell you um, how to do it. I, you shouldn't apply for it. I don't think anyone like three, you, you shouldn't apply too far in advance um, for it. But it's pretty easy to do. You can do it um um, on, online. You don't have to send in your passport or anything like that. You pay the fee. I forgot how much it is. You pay the fee, fill out the form online, and then they send it to you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And so here we go. I think I have answered all of your questions. If anything else comes up, please reach out to, um, to myself, reach out to my team. That's why we're here. We're here to answer your questions. So um, please utilize us. I'd rather for you to um, have a question um, and ask us than, than not to ask it. Um, give us your ideas of where you want to go, what you want to do, uh, because we are here for you. We're here to, to take you on these fantastic voyages around the world. So um, thank you for your time tonight. Um, thank you for your participation. Um, thank you for your prayers um, and just thank you uh, for your support and um, God willing, we will continue to travel and see this big, beautiful world that he has created for us. Good night and be blessed, good people.